Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Every vision starts with a dream, but that dream takes action to turn it into a reality. And that's been my life motto literally since I was a teenager, starting with BHB and such amazing snakes like this pastel pink albino hognose snake. As a matter of fact, we ended up buying the second ever sold pastel pink albino hognose that was ever offered from a guy named Rich Evans. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it was a lot of money for a kid to spend and they weren't really that great of animals. It took several years of outbreeding to turn them into really strong animals. Animals. But I was willing to put the action in because I believed in projects. I wanted to be a snake breeder. I wanted to raise animals and work with animals every day. And BHB was the only thing on my mind all the time. I was willing to work so hard to achieve that goal, to be able to do this full time every day, working with animals. And over 25 years, that's basically was my main focus. And there were so many projects over the course of that 25 years that really defined BHB and allowed those actions and working hard to actually become a reality so that I could breed snakes full time and spend every day of my life. You know, these albino Arizona mountain kings were one of them. I actually was offered them from a guy down in Missouri and he had literally went to a pet shop years before, bought an Arizona mountain king snake from one pet shop, bought one from another pet shop. When he bred them together, popped out the first albino Arizona Mountain King Snakes. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I paid $50,000 for the first group of animals. That's right, 50 grand. I remember literally scraping every penny together. I think I might even borrowed some money to buy the project, but I just believed in it. I thought it was cool, and I knew that it was gonna kind of make a mark. You know, people would talk about it like, okay, BHB has the only albino Arizona Mountain King Snakes. And it worked out great all these years later. We're still producing them. People still love them. They're still absolutely amazing animals but again you know it all started with kind of that vision and the dream like oh my gosh this could happen and to work towards it and there's been so many projects that have kind of defined that entire path that I've been on certainly this project was the project that defined my really future in the ball python world in particular and of course that was the pinstripe ball python when I bought the first pinstripe ball python it was an enormous risk I mean like literally everything I had, I was crazy to do it. And I had no idea even what the animal even looked like when I bought it, literally bought it sight unseen. It came in, I was blown away, and a couple years later, we proved it out to be incomplete dominant. And literally, that skyrocketed BHB. And listen, when you're following your dreams, when you're trying to make that vision into reality with all the actions, it's not easy. There's gonna be a lot of resistance, there's gonna be a lot of hardship. You're gonna work harder than other people, and there are times you're gonna to wanna to give up and say, just get a nine to five job and have a normal life because this is way too much. But the truth is, if you can persevere through that and get to that point where you wanna be, it is such a beautiful thing. And I'm encouraging you guys to continue to do that because it is truly amazing. Over the last two years, I've talked about the Reptarium at nauseum, so we won't go back and repeat that, but you guys know all the action I've done to make this one a reality. Certainly the latest and next vision that I had, the dream, I had was actually to add a sloth to the Reptarium. I've talked a lot about it. You guys may be getting sick of it, but you know, it came with quite a bit of resistance when it came to Laura. And once we get the permits and we do all our homework, you're gonna be on board with no, the sloth. No, that's not what I said at all. I said, yeah, I do your homework you, right. first and show it to me, right. and then we can talk about it. But we're, pretty, no... but we're pretty set that we're good. No, we are not. I know you are. I am not. <laughs> it's gonna be okay, Laurie, seriously. I'm gonna send no. these off. About seven months ago, after a year or so of researching it, I really brought it up to Lori, and she was completely opposed to it for a number of re reasonable reasons. But I had to continue to work on showing her that those reasons could be overcame. And finally, after a lot of action going on to get things going, Lori bought into it and we ended up starting looking for a sloth and looking into getting a sloth, as you guys know, applying for permits, doing all our due diligence. And now, today, Lori is actually down in Florida and she's about to meet our sloth, Drogo, for the very first time. <laughs> okay, this cutie is happy to see me. <laughs> uh, I'm here to meet a sloth, um, but I've also met this guy, which I think I might take home too. So let's go see if we can meet 
struggle. Mm -hmm. So cute. <laughs> he came in at two pounds. He's a tiny little oh, oh my goodness, he's so gentle. Is that always how they are when they eat? Mm -hmm. No. So, not gonna lie, this little guy is cuter than I thought he was gonna be. <laughs> He's actually smaller. I thought he was going to be bigger, which is actually cooler. It's a little bit less intimidating because I don't know when you think face to face with a sloth. I just don't know what I was thinking. But he's super cool and clearly super chill. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that uh, I think that he is going to be a pretty good addition to the reptarium sloth. Arium. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he is super cool. Brian is going to die when he meets him. I know that for sure. But this is pretty dang cool. <laughs> we can see what they're doing. Right? Yeah. The dogs are the biggest. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> You're such a sweetheart. I'm so glad that I got to meet him. And I think I think he's gonna fit in really perfect. Honestly. Alright. So maybe he was right. And maybe I will fall in love with him a little bit. But how could you not? Do you see that little cute little face? <laughs> he's adorable. Alright. Well, we'll see you again soon, buddy. We gotta go now. <laughs> He's like, I'm just gonna help myself to the food. <laughs> we just have another label. <laughs> Too cute. How awesome was that? I mean, I literally almost teared up seeing Lori interact with Drogo, and I could just see it in her eyes. She didn't want to admit how much she loves that animal, but I know she fell in love immediately, and that is amazing because, you know, listen, for me wanting to do something that's awesome, but having her on board is a whole nother story. It's very important for Lori to be involved in this because I know it'll be done even better than what I could do myself. Now, listen, we still have a lot of action to do in this sloth room. So there's a lot of work to be done to get to our final goal. But again, a vision with a dream, action added to it, turns into a reality. And I'm telling you what, it's not gonna be long. I'm gonna be standing in this room right now and Drogo is gonna be in this room and it's gonna be absolutely incredible. As I've been telling you the last few days, we have our new merch out. Oh, we've got salt and pepper, Diddy and Dixie. We've got different color shirts. We have hoodies, we have coffee mugs, we have stickers. So if you love this design, I hope that you guys will check out the link in the description. It's only going to be available for a limited time. Please get you some merch. I really do appreciate it. I love them. They're super comfy. I think you'll love them too. So thank you as always for letting my dreams become reality. And you guys know how passionate I am about podcasting. I've been talking about it forever and, and I really hope that you guys will join me on this journey because to me it's awesome because, you know, vlogging is great, but it's still condensed, you know. Podcasting is this long, you know, hour and a half, two plus hour type thing where I can really explain my ideas a lot more in depth. And just like everything, I've, I'm all in, guys. I mean, obviously I've spent a ton of time, money, effort, everything to do this and I believe wholeheartedly that podcasting is going to be a huge part of my future. Of course we have our Wednesday night podcast with the family. It's Lori, Noah, and myself and then Noah does his own on Friday called Choices. A little bit raw, you know. If you guys like the kind of uh, you know darker comedy, you'll love that podcast. Definitely not for kids. And then Saturday I started one that is myself and a guest. And that guest could be all kinds of things. Could be animal people, could be all kinds of things. Here in October we actually have an NFL Super Bowl champion. We have a cryptozoologist coming on to talk about cryptids, which is, of course is mythical animals. We actually have Will Nace, the venomous guy down from Florida. Brian Cusco is gonna be on, as well as on Halloween. We're gonna end this whole month off with a bang. We have the two founders of the Motor City Paranormal Society, which is the oldest paranormal investigative group here in Michigan, are coming on to talk about ghosts and stuff like that. So it's cool, and I love podcasting. I think it's amazing, and I really hope that you guys join me. I know I talk about it a lot, but I'm not sure how many of you guys understand what we're really trying to do here, so definitely do me a favor link in the description check it out i think you'll like it and uh, i'd love your feedback down in the comments let me know what you guys think and what we can do better because i think in the next year it's going to be a much larger part of my life and speaking of actions i've got to make this pile of wood turn into shelves for this area of the 
camera room over here, control room. So let's go ahead and jump in and do some work. You guys know I love building stuff and we have a lot of stuff to work on. So I'm gonna put the first cabinet together and we're gonna get an idea what this wall is gonna look like here in the next couple of days. All right, so after a little bit of work, it really wasn't that bad to be honest with you. We have the shelves in. So basically what will happen is uh, the same color as the floor will be strips right here. We'll have shelves that are adjustable so that these bozos here can put uh, camera all their camera gear. gear and stuff like that in here. So it'll, when it's done, it's gonna really look trimmed out. It's gonna look really beautiful and kind of match the whole decor of everything. So uh, all right, uh, again, keep moving forward. So one of my dreams is about to come reality, that slot. And I think now Lori is 100% on board, which is absolutely amazing. I cannot be more excited about it. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of action to still do to make it a reality, but we're gonna get there. I promise you we will. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. If you enjoyed this video, here's a playlist of a bunch of other animals I've gotten over the years. You can also do me a favor. Remember that podcast I was talking about? Subscribe to it right up here. It's called Checking In. On this side, subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.